Next, we want to jump on a pretty interesting story and something that I kind of have a lot of experience with and something that, something that kind of touches home with me. So this is courtesy of Reuters. And it says here, a lawsuit over Subway um, now says, no, a, lo a lawsuit over Subway tuna now says chicken, pork and cattle DNA were detected, right? So there was this whole scandal happened, I think a couple of months ago, where it went all over social media that um, Subway were being sued because supposedly the tuna sandwich, they say tuna doesn't contain any traces of tuna in it. And now they've been able to hypothesize that it's not, even though it's not tuna, it's got the contents of chicken, pork and cattle all in, including it to kind of give it that kind of fake tunery texture, I guess. Just another kind of catalogue in missteps and faux pas from Subway. A company who, again, I'm surprised they've been able to survive. On the back of the whole Jared thing, on the back of this, on the back of, you know, the viral videos that go, the videos that go viral on TikTok, like literally, it feels like every other week, there's a kid that works in Subway that's basically, you know, unraveling the secrets of Subway and how they make their chicken. And God forbid, <gasps> the chicken has actually come from an actual real chicken. It's actually from a tin or something, right? These videos go viral. People get flipping shocked at this stuff, but they still seem to survive. They still seem to kind of, for some reason, maintain the confidence of people. I don't know how, and I don't know why. Because if you've ever had Subway for a prolonged period of time in your life, you know that it's not good. It really isn't good at all. It's like beyond not good. And I think the idea of Subway when it originally launched, right, this um, quick um, pick up and, you know, this, this quick in and out um, foot long sandwiches that you could get, pick your bread, get it toasted, put cheese on it, add stuff, blah, blah, blah. It was nice. Do you know what I mean? It was a nice idea in principle. It made sense. Okay, cool. That would be cool to have. But when you actually went there and you tried to actually eat that shit, like, oh my God. And again, this is a period in my life where I had, um, there was this scam going on, right? This little scam, this little finesse where people were selling preloaded accounts of like Subway. You know, Subway cards, someone will sell like a preloaded Subway card account or they'd maybe add it with fun. I don't know what they were doing. We don't, I didn't ask. I didn't tell um, what I'm telling now, but it's, it's long, long gone. And um, you'd go to the store and you could basically get a Subway footlong for like a quid or like a fiver or something, right? For maybe like the price of one, you could get two. Or whatever deal had kind of um, sprung up on that day. No, I think it was that thing that this Subway did where each day there was like a meal deal. Or I don't know, there's a deal of the day. And basically you could get that for a very, very discounted price. I remember for a period of time, I was eating that shit like, I'm, I'm not going to lie, maybe for like a, a month straight. I was eating Subway for like a month straight because I had that I had those flipping accounts. And then there came a time where one day I just started shitting all over myself, out of my nostrils, out of my mouth, out of my ears, every orifice in my body, every place I've got a hole, just, you know, stuff was leaking out of it. And I was sick for mad long, I think for like two weeks or something, right? I had the residue um, feeling of like some sort of food poisoning over, you know, gl you know, gluttony, whatever it is, right? Overindulgence. And from then on, I've never eaten a Subway ever again. Never, ever, ever eaten one. And again, I was a Subway guy. I used to go, go there and eat the fucking nachos, which essentially is just tortilla chips that they put in a cardboard box covered with cheddar cheese and put into a microwave or cover, you know, with some salsa microwave and just press something. And then by the time you get the chips out, it's just like cardboard. And I'd eat those religiously. Um, or not religiously, I'd, that'd be my go-to side. Um, the meatball sub I love, the, the the Italian one, the one with the Italian... Uh, bruv, I, I'd had so many subways in my life and then one day I just, after, again, after two weeks of being bedridden, you know, and and using up all the toilet paper in the house, I just thought, you know what, enough's enough and I just cut it off to cold turkey. So I can't imagine nowadays, again, this was a long time ago. This was like, I don't know, a, a while ago, let's say. But let's say for now, there's so many different restaurants and stores and shops and even little kind of shops and whatever little delis whatnot they exist now It'll, it's a real crime crime it's a real shame if you would subject yourself to eating subway because it's not even that cheap compared to like going to an actual deli or going to a restaurant and getting a takeaway sandwich or something that they make there they, you know what i mean it's not that cheap compared to it it's like what a fiver or something right six dollars or something for like a foot long you could go to like a good, a, a decent restaurant and pick something up for a decent sort of price or God forbid, you can make your own at home for maybe the same amount, buying all the ingredients and, and having an absolute massive baguette instead of just one foot long. So people that are still eating Subway now, you legitimately are mentally ill. If you're still eating Subway, if that's your go-to lunch, because I remember back in the day when I used to be going to the office, because now obviously most people are working from home, but... Because again, ima yeah, imagine you're all, imagine you're Uber eating or delivering or door dashing a fucking Subway. 
Like, you are a sick motherfucker. You are sick in the head. You really are. And I, I pray for you if that is you, that person. But most people that saw you in Subway was just because you were, just, you, was, you was at work. And usually, whatever, wherever you work, mostly, well, mostly where I've worked in kind of centrally metropolitan areas, there's usually only a certain number of restaurants or places to go and eat, right? There's like a, there's like a coffee shop, maybe a couple of fast food joints, and then here, a pizza place, and maybe like a Subway. So, of course, after a period of time, you, you know, only, there's only so many sandwiches that you could eat right so maybe like a you know the classic ones are like in the triangle shape so maybe one day you're like you know what i'm fed up i want to get a subway foot long and you go in there and once you eat it you, you regret eating it because number one it doesn't taste like anything because i remember once seeing them putting the baguette in the in the actual oven and it was like the size of my pinky it was incredibly incredibly small and it comes up it's all fluffed up it's not it doesn't really have anything to it it's no substance to it um you <clears throat> They say it's toasted, but by the time you cover it in sauces and shit, it's back to being soggy again. Useless placement, useless place. But let's let's go anyway. Lawsuit over Subway um, tuna now says chicken and pork cattle and DNA were detected. Says so the following in this article, courtesy of Reuters. <clears throat> It says uh, the following, um, a new version of the lawsuit accusing Subway of deceiving the public about its tuna products said lab testing now shows it contains animal proteins such as chicken, pork, kettle, and not the advertised 100% tuna. That's what they advertise it as, 100% tuna. Come on, man. I guess you could get around this if you're cheeky because 100% tuna could mean 100% tuna from 100% tuna extract, so that kind of stuff, right? But it's like, it's like when they say 100% juice. 100% fresh orange juice, you know what I mean? Um, and then you look closely and it's like, you know, from flipping whatever they call it. There's a word they use to, where it's not actually from the orange. And it continues. It says, um, Karen Danawawa, Danawawa and Nailima Amin filed a third version of the proposed class action lawsuit a week in the federal court of San Francisco near their homes. Subway said in a statement it was seek to dismiss the reckless and improper, and improper lawsuit. The chain said the plaintiff filed three meritless complaints, changing their story each time. High quality, wild court, 100% tuna was regulated strictly in the United States and where around the world. Since the case began in January, Subway has run TV ads and launched a website defending his tuna. It's also revamped his venue, but it's not his tuna, saying an upgrade wasn't needed. <clears throat> okay. They're sticking by it, isn't it? Doubling down on their tuna. <clears throat> Sorry about that. <clears throat> Got a frog stuck in my throat or hay fever. One or the other. Um, it continues here. It says, original complaint claimed that Subway um, sandwiches um, and wraps were bereft of tuna, while an, an amended complaint said that they were not 100% sustainably caught sip, skipjack and yellowfin tuna. U.S. District Judge John Tiger dismissed the second version last month saying the plaintiffs did not show um they bought subway tuna based on alleged misinterpretations he did not rule on the merits and gave the plaintiffs another chance to make the case the november laws eight notes relies on testing by a marine biologist on 20 tuna samples taken for 22 restaurants in southern california they got a marine biologist imagine that you go to flipping marine biology university wherever that means um, or whatever that sounds like, or whatever that course is. And then here you are being um, used or being kind of um, brought into a case where you have to sample 20 tuna samples from various different restaurants of Subway in California. Oh, what a life. It said 19, 19 samples had no detectable tuna DNA sequences, while all 20 contained detectable chicken DNA, 11 contained um, pork DNA, and 7 contained cattle. Many people cannot eat various meats because of their diet or religious issues. Is there a religion that exists where you can eat tuna, but you, could be, you, you can eat tuna, but you can't eat pork? What religion is that? I guess that's what, is that, is that, um, is that uh, if you're Muslim, you can eat tuna, but you can't eat pork? Why do I think tuna is pork though? I don't know why I think that. I don't know why I think there's like, there's pigs swimming in the ocean. But yeah, that was a proper 62 IQ moment there. Big up Wings of Redemption. Let's continue. Many people cannot eat various meats. Um, da -da -da. The complaint said that the testing showed that the Subway mislabeled its tuna products and duped its consumers into paying premium prices. Amin said the ordered... Um, she ordered um, Subway tuna uh, products more than 100 times from 2013 to 2019. Imagine having to look at your bank statement and count up the amount of times you've been to Subway. Like, that is up there with, like, one of the worst things I'd ever want to spend my time doing. Surely a lawsuit isn't worth it, that amount of time, to count there, counting all the flipping times that you've contactless paid for a fucking tuna baguette. Yowzers. The lawsuit seeks unspecified damages for fraud and violations of the Californian consumer protection laws. The case is the. So, in this case, right, you think, you think to yourself, in terms of reputational damage, 
Subway can't afford to settle outside the court, can they? They kind of have to go all the way and get the get the case dismissed. Because if they settle outside the court, people are going to immediately think they're guilty and they're immediately going to think their tuna isn't tuna. And if they stand by their 100% tuna claim, they're going to have to prove or they're going to have to prove via the court some way by getting it thrown out that this case or this lawsuit is meritless and, you know, is a complete waste of time. Because if they settle, it's a wrap. But then again, I say then it's not. Do you know what I mean? Look what happened to Gerard. Do you know what I mean? Like, he's fine. No, he's well, you know, he's not fine, but he got caught doing what he got caught doing and Subway didn't miss a beat. Like, obviously, you don't, you're not going to blame them for his flipping crimes, but still, they suffered no reputational damage from that whatsoever. Like, people still eat there willingly. They take their kids there sometimes. Even take flipping, they're flipping birthday parties for their little kids in flipping Subways, knowing where everything that happened with them. So, I don't know, man. Um, good luck to Subway. Good luck to the guys and girls, or the girls, I think, who are suing them. If they do, they'll get an amazing come up especially during the pandemic, you can't hate on that, innit? You can't hate on that. 